Hi. Welcome to Drinking the Kool Aid. Welcome. I'm Megs. I'm Hannah. Spooky story time. Yes, it is. Megan just offered to do it in the dark, and I am so good on that. I was like, uh, I'll hold a light, and we can turn all the other lights off, and I'll tell you a spooky story. I do not want that. Yeah. I love spooky stuff. You know this, but... You have created some creepy things with the story. You've made some weird things happen, so... Well, I tossed out the the offer. No. no, Okay. No. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, I think I accidentally opened up Jumanji. She did. No, she definitely did. It's not think. She did. And ever since I started reading a specific book, uh, weird things have been happening. Yes. Very weird things. And so we will be promptly saging the house. Yeah. So, like, we got swarmed with birds. And it it's real abnormal what happened. So I'm in the kitchen cooking, and I look out the window, and there's, like, this ginormous swirl of birds. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? And so I go outside, and it's all over our house, like thousands and thousands of birds, and they're like dive bombing everything in the neighborhood. I call Hannah. I'm like, hey, I think Jumanji might have opened up, but I'm not sure. Yeah, until we got swarmed with bees. Then we were sure. Right. Well, so on the same night as the bird swirling... Uh, afterwards, I come in the house and the cat dishes that I had just cleaned and set up on a shelf were all upside down on the floor. And I was like, okay, that's kind of weird. Then my bedroom door, I shut it and Hannah and I were going to do a recording and all of a sudden my door opened on its own. I had to wait till she was done talking to tell her and I was like... (laughs) seriously dying inside the entire time. Yeah. And then I called Hannah and I'm like, hey, I think Jumanji's opened up again because all of a sudden we had thousands and thousands of bees swirling around and hitting our windows. Yeah, like honeybees. And they were hitting the window so hard that like you could hear it inside. Plink, 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 plink. Yeah. And you could hear the buzzing. (laughs) Yeah. From inside because there were so many. Yeah. And like, if it was just the birds and just like, or just the honeybees, I'd be like, whatever. Like, it's weird, but it's explainable. But like, two, both of those within like the same, I, it had to have been like within a week or two of each other. Yeah. It was a couple days. The birds and the bees thing. Uh huh. The oh, birds and the bees. That's weird. Funny. <laughs> I didn't notice that. Yeah, that was a couple days apart. It was within the same week. So You're trying to give us a sex talk with Jumanji right now? Here we go. <laughs> Let me explain to you how it works. <laughs> Honest to God, I I would actually love for you to explain it because I'm pretty sure I would pee my pants laughing. Yeah. I don't think I would be able to handle that. I really don't. (laughs) I wouldn't either, actually. I'd be laughing too hard. I'm far too immature. Right, right. Uh, So, now that you've got a little bit of that backstory. uh, Yeah, all the things that Megan has unleashed with this story. And I do want to state that any weird things that I accidentally unleashed, I'd like to put back in the box. Ooh, and tell us if anything weird happens to you when you listen to this one. Yeah, go ahead. Um, You can write us a little message if you accidentally got haunted. However, we are not (laughs) responsible for anybody that gets haunted by listening to this. (laughs) So... (laughs) Just want to put that out there. (laughs) Oh, no. Actually, I have a fun little disclaimer, and I have never had to do this before. Oh, no. So, 
First off, the book that I read was called Harold the Haunted Doll by Anthony Quinata. Disclaimer. The doll we're discussing has been known to influence or affect people all over the world just from hearing about him or seeing his picture. Oh, good. It's one of those. Please be respectful and do not taunt him. This story can cause headaches, pain, nightmares, anxiety, hauntings, or even death. Listen at your own uh, risk. Ha, ha, what? <laughs> so. Oh, my God. Why did you actually go into a freaking commercial voice? Because I've always and wanted to for my entire life. I can't. I love the commercials where you hear, like, 40 <laughs> problems that you're going to have. The fucking end of it. Mm-hmm. You, you sped through it and it sounded exactly like you were on TV. Uh, so, oh, my God. Is this where you tell me if I'm allergic to Harold the doll to not, to not listen to this? <laughs> yes. That's exactly what I'm saying here. I'm freaking loving commercials when they do that. Uh, yeah. So if any commercials are looking for somebody to help out with that, so I there would you love go. to. Yeah, you yeah. just you just found your person. <laughs> That's my calling. <laughs> it, truthfully, that was amazing. <laughs> okay. The names were changed in the book that I read, but the story is true. Our story I don't know begins. I want to be in the room with you right now. <laughs> Oh, no, you do. You do. I'm freaking out. Okay. You're freaking me out. You're freaking me out. Our story begins in 2003 when a doll was listed on eBay with quite an interesting story. This doll was said to be haunted and could cause people to suffer pain, illness, or even death. I don't want any of those. No, thank you. Greg's brother sold items on eBay, and Greg just did not see the appeal to this, but he figured he could try selling something on there if he gave it a really good backstory. He wanted to see what would happen if he got, like, a beat-up composition doll from an antique store to sell. A composition doll is made up of composite materials such as sawdust, glue, and other materials including cornstarch, resin, and wood flour. The first composition dolls were made in the 19th century. They were marketed as unbreakable. They weren't as fragile as the dolls that were previously produced. The composite materials deteriorated and the dolls would have small cracks or they would begin to flake. But some of them were made with a protective coating of varnish to delay all that deterioration. Composition was used to make doll bodies in the 1870s. But composition dolls are dolls that were only made with those materials in the heads. And then the bodies were not composition. They were softer. And so that started between 1909 and the early 1950s. Dolls with composition heads and cloth bodies might be referred to as mama dolls. Mama. Really? <laughs> yeah. You ne- you've never even seen it. I know. That commercial just still scares lives me. With you. It yeah. still, to this day, lives with you. Just that. Wow. That's all I needed. <laughs> That's all I need to see of the movie to know I'm scared. <laughs> it, was, it was actually a good movie. <laughs> Ew. so they were mama dolls and they would often have a voice mechanism that said mama when they were rocked did they say it like that i think so okay greg purchased a doll and listed it on ebay in 2003 and the original posting was listed in the book so i'm gonna read it quote i'm sure it's happened to us all at least once or twice You're walking around the flea market or antique mall looking for a treasure or two, and you come upon a beat-up looking doll. You think to yourself, oh, that's charming, or the child who owned that doll must have really loved this thing. But what I thought after seeing that doll that is offered today should never, ever be repeated. This doll was purchased in a small dirt lot flea market in the quaint town of Webster, Florida. Webster is a very charming, industrious town about 60 miles southwest of Gainesville. They have a weekly flea market offering treasures, bargains, and aisles of kernel corn. Anyways, I digress. I had arrived at the flea market fairly late in the day when most people were packing up to go home. 
That is when I saw an elderly man placing the doll in a box. It looked interesting, so I asked the man if I could see it. The conversation went something like this. Man, you don't want to see this doll. Me. Sure I do. What do you want for it? Man. Well, that's a good question because it's very old. The man looked like he was going to begin to cry. It was my son's. I bought it for him when he was born, and he passed away a few years after. This doll has sat in my work shed for 60 years. I wasn't going to bring it out today, but I figured I just needed to get it out of there. Anyways, I want 20 bucks for it. I gave the guy 20 bucks, put it in a bag, and walked away. When I was halfway down the aisle, the man came running over, visibly out of breath. Man, I have to warn you about something. I just can't let you take him like this. The reason it's been in my shed is that the doll brought an eerie presence into our house after our son died. We would hear crying and singing from his bedroom. When we went to check it out, there was nothing, just the doll. Other things started to happen, and the priest told me I should burn the doll. I tried and tried, but it would barely burn. That's why his arms and legs are so worn. Anyways, I just wanted to let you know. I told him, okay, and chuckled to myself as I walked away. That was until I got home, and my life has never been the same. Two days later, my cat died. My girlfriend left me for the pool guy. I began to have chronic migraines, and this is only two days after purchasing the doll. A week later, I began to hear children laughing and crying in my basement. Every time I would go to check it, of course, nothing. This doll has been in an armadillo coffin in my basement for the last year and a half, and I need to get rid of it. I really do believe it's cursed. Sometimes I touch it, and it seems like it has a pulse. Maybe I'm just paranoid. Maybe not. And then side note, I do just want to cut in for a second and say I looked up armadillo coffins because I was like, what is that? And I found nothing. So I believe... Damn, I was curious too. I think it just means it's a small coffin, but I couldn't find anything. So, okay. Then he continues with his ad and it says, the cursed doll measures 21 inches tall. His, her... Its head, arms, and legs are all composition. The eyes are closed when it's lying down. Please ask any and all questions before you bid on this doll. I have not had it out of the coffin for years, so if anything else happens this week, I'll be sure to let you know. This auction is sold as is, with no returns, please. Winner pays exact shipping and optional insurance. Check out my other auctions for more vintage collectibles and other fine antiques. Ask all questions before you bid, even if you think you're sure about condition, pictures, etc. Please ask all specific questions before bidding. Thanks for looking, and good luck. Okay. (laughs) First off. Yes. I'm going to tell you right now, when he's all, oh, when you're walking through a flea market and you see a doll on the table and you think, oh. That's so charming. Yeah, no. I'm going to tell you what I think. I think absolutely the fuck not. Mm -hmm. And I will go anywhere but where that doll is. I'm not even, like, messing around. Like, I will look at it. I'll be like, "Eh, nope. And then I'm going to keep about my business. And second, if somebody tells me it's haunted, I'm just going to believe you. I'm I'm not (laughs) even going to question it. I'm going to give you that thing back. I'm done. Like, you could be in Target. And, like, we we both grabbed, like, the last object on the shelf, and you're going to be like, oh, it's haunted. And I'm like, you know what? Never mind. I don't need it. Like, hey, that teacup <laughs> is haunted. Right. And you're like, yeah, that's yours now. Right. <laughs> that goes to your like, house. <laughs> if there's a chance, I do not want it. Yeah. <laughs> and the way the old man described that doll, <laughs> I don't want it. Nope. It's not like, oh, it's just a... Friendly ghost that does this and that every once in a while but leaves you alone. No. I do not want any of that. Now, I do want to just say, I could have kept this going on for a while. However, Greg made this all up. Oh, lame. (laughs) Okay, but I'm going to tell you right now. (laughs) Still. (laughs) It's not going to take much. Right. You just, it's haunted and I'm going to be like, you know, yeah. Yeah. Sure is. Yeah. I don't want that anymore. Yeah, I mean, it does... Don't worry. There will be 
hauntings in this story, okay? <laughs> like, oh, I know it. In case anybody is worried about that, there I will. I was not concerned in But it slightest. started off as fake. Fake news, okay? I know. I love that, like, at the very end, he's like, oh, check out my shop for other antiques while sure. you're purchasing this haunted doll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll get right on it. So Greg posted a video that shows the doll moving and talking, and it can also be heard saying the word either here or herald. This video captured over 10,000 views, and it was talked about on Art Bell's Coast to Coast radio show, and paranormal websites were also discussing the doll. The auction ended, and the winning bid was a whopping $700. But the winner never paid the money. So Greg put the doll back up for auction, and he decided to give a little more information. He wrote, quote, It's been over two weeks, and I'm still receiving emails daily about this cursed doll. My life, needless to say, has been fairly hectic. I made an emergency trip to Florida after becoming violently ill after the auction ended. High fever, stomach pains, painful coughs, etc. I was interviewed by the Long Island Press. Some people are actually taking this story serious amidst all the skeptics. I have also been doing research on ghosts, hauntings, cursed antiques, and other paranormal activity. Oddly enough, there have been more supposedly haunted dolls on eBay, some convincing and completely absurd. When in Florida this past week, I was able to make it to the Webster flea market to see if I could find any more information about the doll or the original owner. I thought you were going to say another doll. <laughs> I wasn't able to find the gentleman who sold me the doll, but I did find someone who had said he knew the man and was a longtime friend of the family. He was also sure to tell me that the man had passed away some years before. Oh, I wondered if you were going to say something like that. <laughs> The man, his name was Walter, told me that the gentleman whose name was Harry did, in fact, have a son that passed away only after a year or two of being born. He also told me that the son was severely disfigured. Walter wouldn't go much further than that as he began to tremble and sweat profusely. The winner of the original auction has an unrecognizable email, and the phone number I got through eBay is not a working number. I'm guessing the winner was either too scared or maybe even cursed by the doll. Either way, they received negative feedback since this doll has been tormenting me for too long. If anyone thinks I'm making this up, they can email me for more details. Before the last auction ended, I had set up my video camera in the middle of the night. I put the camera on a bench and used the built-in night vision feature as my only light. I wasn't able to add the video footage that I took of the doll originally since the auction had less than 12 hours left. I want to thank everyone who has contacted me and offered me advice about the doll. I would really like to get this doll to someone who could research it or contain it. It needs to either be locked away in a controlled environment or destroyed. Although, so far, that seems to be impossible. Again, the cursed doll measures 21 inches tall. His, her, its heads, arms, and legs are all composition. The eyes are closed when it's lying down. Please ask any and all questions before you bid on this doll. As you can see, I'm a very serious eBay power seller. I sell high-end antiques and collectibles. This doll has affected my business tremendously. It has made me severely depressed, and I haven't been physically able to list anything in the past two weeks because of my sickness and how weak I've been. This auction is sold as is, with no returns, please. Okay, like, I see where he's going with this, but also, yeah. why would you go and tell everybody that you're sick all the freaking time from this doll? Listen, like, I'm this... not going to go anywhere near it. No, but this draws people in. It's so weird. It it gets everyone interested. Like, he's actually doing a good job, I think, with this backstory. Oh, no, he is. But as somebody that's migraine prone, like... Yeah. You don't want to get any more? Hell no! <laughs> okay. He says, winner pays exact shipping and optional insurance. Check out my other auctions for more vintage collectibles and other fine antiques. Ask all questions before you bid, even if you think you're sure about the condition, pictures, etc. Please ask all questions before bidding. Thanks and God bless. 
Then Greg posted another update. Quote, the past few days have been pretty quiet, actually. I know a lot of people have been checking in to see if any strange or weird things have been happening. It's not like the doll is running around and trying to kill me. You would just have to live with this thing to really get it. In case you're wondering, this is the doll that we discussed on Coast to Coast AM with George Nori. I was not able to hear the show, but this is the doll. I thought about bringing the doll to the local church, but I'm scared to touch the doll or bring it into the presence of the Most Holy. I've thought about getting an iron ore safe to transport the baby doll I have named Haunted Harold. A lot of people have been asking about the armadillo coffin that I had Harold in. After he leaves, I'll be offering the coffin on eBay, so please keep looking. Damn, this dude's a real salesman. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I warned people last time, but again, please do not look directly into the doll's eyes. Some have said eyes are the window of the soul. Well, some souls are very, very black indeed. Got it. Never look in his eyes. Understood. <laughs> Fake or not, I don't care. I'm not looking in his eyes. <laughs> and he ends it with, God bless. <laughs> 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 I do Such like a, his flair for dramatics. Is that, that's exactly it, too. I, I, do, <laughs> I do enjoy that. Yeah. Now, this next entry from Greg gets very, very strange. Okay. All right. Okay. He says, I'm not sure how true this is, but someone emailed this to me. I guess when the first auction was up, the FBI performed an x-ray of the doll. Truth be told, I guess they found that a human baby was inside the doll. Also, after waking this morning to strange sounds outside of the window, I received a very disturbing email from an eBay user. It looks like not only did I have the unfortunate luck of purchasing a haunted doll, I guess it's turned me into an evildoer. In so much that after the doll leaves my possession, I guess I'm going to still have some very bad luck. Here is the email in its entirety. And seriously, you guys, this is... Very bizarre. Okay, I am so intrigued. Okay, so this email that he gets from some random eBay user. You will receive due punishment from the gods. I'll be there to judge you at cremation day. You are an evildoer. I can see it in your writing. Last night, I talked to the Lord of Lords. When you go to your bed, your couch, look around you, look at the ceiling, and you'll see what somebody is about to put on you. Something will come from a light bulb and will wrap around you. I see green and red. That might be the color of the thing coming to wrap you. Turn off the light, avoid looking at the guitar, and do not close your eyes or things will get very, very bad for you. Sleep with a cross near you or you will not see daylight anymore. Soon you will start the dance of the spirits and you are the main sacrifice host. I know a lot about you because... I feel you. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you with my faces. Your face is so interrupting. <laughs> this next. That made me so uncomfortable. Okay. I know. I feel you. <laughs> okay. Uh, please don't. Um, all right. This next line is my favorite, though. He says... Or this person says, I am not a pizza girl. I, Wait, I don't, that's it? It says, I am not a pizza girl. I'm the spirit of my God, the Lord of the Lords. What the fuck does that mean? I don't have a clue. But they are not a pizza girl. Where, where did pizza come into this? I don't know. Why you gotta drag pizza down? What did pizza ever do to you? For real? <laughs> it says... I can read your words before you say them, and I can see a dialogue between you and the Lord of the Lords about to happen soon. About to happen in your own bedroom, right after you ship that doll, Greg. I recommend you to keep it and bury it five feet underground, or your evil ad talk will turn against you. I see the following. Lord, you have been evil and naughty, Greg. Greg. Please, please, Lord of the Lords, please don't kill me. Please don't. <laughs> God, I can't handle you right now. He's begging. I'm scared. Lord, I'm scared. Please. Lord, silence, Picador. Greg, 
well, you better pull the trigger because I don't give a fuck. He begins singing, I'm ready, ready for the big ride, baby. Lord, silence, Picador. Flesh burning. Any suggestions or comments about the eBay user's vision would be greatly appreciated. Do you have anything to say about that? That was the end of it? Yes. Oh my god. (laughs) I think Greg wrote this himself, but who knows, maybe some random person jumped in on this whole thing. I don't even know what was happening. I don't either. And I still don't know what pizza had to do with any of it. I don't know, but they're not a pizza girl. And like, don't come for me, but that really sounded like... An angry religious protester just yeah. rattling off bullshit. Yes. <laughs> that's like exactly A lot what of it, things that don't make sense. Yeah, that's exactly what it sounded like to me. It I just, actually was not going to put that part in here, but I was like, no, this is so ridiculous and far-fetched that I gotta. So, there you go. <sighs> okay. <laughs> what the hell did we just listen to? I have no idea. Okay. Uh, all right. All right. Smut. All right. There you go. So, Greg's next entry. Uh, people have been asking me why I canceled the bids and relisted the auction. This is simple. This morning, after getting that very weird email, I decided to post it without realizing the F word was in it. In fear of eBay canceling the auction, I had to relist the auction so I could take the word out. The auction's exactly the same. It even reads the same as the day of the original auction. The first bidder did not pay me or even contact me. Obviously, by canceling the bids, it gives people a chance to bid again. So good luck and keep the questions coming. But maybe not the weird ass stories. Right. Yeah, about how you're doomed. <laughs> Luckily, there's no more of that. <laughs> no more and no pizza and the Lord of Lords coming for you. No. Uh, then he says, okay, this is bizarre. If everything else hasn't been weird enough, someone pointed this out to me earlier this afternoon, but hadn't been able to post about it until now. Here's basically what someone emailed me. Hi, I've been watching your auction. Am I seeing things? In one of the pictures, the baby's eye is white clouded, and I see a face in it. Do you see it? I didn't see it, then O-M-G. So I zoomed into the photo, and here's what I saw. All I can say is, wow. Any ideas? Well, I think now that it's pretty obvious that the FBI X-raying the baby article is fake. Obviously. (laughs) There's not a real baby inside of Harold the doll. That was, like, so far-fetched anyways. Right, right. Because, like, FBI, like, he really went all out with that. Well, and then they're not going to, like, come bust your door down and take the doll. They're just going to be like, well, there was a baby in there. Right. So, yeah, you can just go ahead and keep it, but there's definitely a baby in there. Yeah. (laughs) Whoever made the GIF has added their own little hidden message. Thanks for all the advice and suggestions. Someone recently emailed me saying that their daughter has seen the doll wink and laugh at her. Anyone with kids see anything like this? I know that they're supposed to be more in touch with the spirit world. Wow. Well, this whirlwind of an auction is finally coming to a close. Well, hopefully. It looks like the curse of Haunted Harold has surpassed even the wildest of bizarre occurrences or dreams, but... That's another story completely. I've been getting some very interesting emails from people who are psychics and have claimed to have studied the supernatural and occult phenomenon for a good part of their life. A few people have said they definitely feel a spirit attached to this doll. They say it's a male spirit and it's very angry. They've instructed me to bury the doll or try to destroy the doll. Dude, just let him sell the damn thing to somebody else. (laughs) (laughs) That would be their problem. Yeah. I just, like, dude already, well, I I know he made it all up, but, like, dude said you couldn't burn it, and I'm pretty sure you're, like, not supposed to do that anyways. I can't remember which one you're not supposed to do, but I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to burn them. Right, yeah, and I mean, that's part of the fake story that he made up anyways. Yeah. So... And maybe the psychics are, too, but who knows? Maybe people really were messaging him. So, like, I hope they were part of the story because otherwise... (laughs) 
they maybe need a career change. We'll see. We will find out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know. Oh, I suppose they're probably right about later on, but I don't even know if their psychics are real. Anyways, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god no i love this debate this is great <laughs> he says i still would rather get this doll into the hands of someone who can control it or study it i've had it for too long and just want it out of my possession at the same time i feel that this doll is special and needs to go to the right person that's why the criticism about the price doesn't bother me who is to say the price of a tormented spirit a hundred dollars five hundred dollars how much to finally put the soul to rest? If the right person's out there, they'll pay almost any price since their good deeds will come back to them many fold. Yep, another update to make my auction even more unbelievable. Tell that to the people that swear they see the, do the doll's eyes moving. Okay. We are pretty much done with Greg here, okay? The winner of the auction this time was Kathy. She was living in Dublin when she won the auction, but she was planning to attend her aunt's wedding in New York. Then she was going on a cruise to Bermuda with her fiancé, Rick. Two weeks prior to her cruise, she met up with Greg in Manhattan to retrieve Harold the doll. Her fiancé was not exactly pleased about this whole thing. Yeah, understandably. <laughs> and he felt like she paid way too much money for this doll, which she received in a Reed drugstore bag. Well, and she was just about to go on, like, three vacations or some shit, so, like... To a wedding and right. then a cruise, yeah. I wouldn't be happy if she just spent a bunch of money on a freaking haunted doll either. Right. Kathy had been childhood friends with Greg's older brother, so they actually knew each other, and that's why it was not a problem for them to just meet up in person. Kathy did not believe that the doll was cursed, but she wanted to use the doll to learn how to do doll restoration. When Rick actually saw the doll, he agreed, like, okay, yeah, it's in bad shape. I, I understand now. So he's like, Kathy could probably learn a lot from this one. Shortly after Kathy got the doll, she experienced a few strange things, but she just chalked it up to a coincidence. Kathy and Rick originally placed the doll in the trunk of their rental car, and they left it there until Kathy's aunt asked if she could see it. She thought the idea of a haunted doll was hilarious. Wow, we have different opinions. Yeah. <laughs> So, tee -hee. Very, very different. <laughs> the next day, her aunt called and asked Kathy if she could pick her up at work. And she's like, yeah, sure. She went to a chiropractor and was diagnosed with a herniated disc, and she was put on bed rest until her wedding. Which, that would have to be such a disaster. Yeah, that's pretty rough. When you're trying to plan all the last minute things, that sucks. The next day, her aunt's fiancé threw out his back, and so he went to the same chiropractor, and he also had a herniated disc. Like, what are the odds there? It's pretty ironic. I mean, that normally does not happen to two different people, or, like, two related people at the same time. Right, right. So now bride and groom, okay. herniated discs. Next, Kathy injured her back. On the day of the wedding, the hairdresser didn't show up, the wedding cake fell apart, and the groom had to stay in a wheelchair. Oh. All right. So it did not go as planned. Kathy and Rick were supposed to go on a cruise with Kathy's aunt and her new husband a week after the wedding. A few days before the cruise, Kathy's aunt calls her up and she's like, Hey, we both have strep and bronchitis. And on top of that, her aunt also had shingles. I thought you were going to say a herniated disc. <laughs> <laughs> no, she already had that. <laughs> so. Damn, shingles. Yeah. On top of bronchitis and whatever the heck else. And just strep. A strep. Oh, God. That would be so miserable. That's a shitty combo. <laughs> oh, my God. So they were not going on the cruise. 
in case you didn't pick up on that. I got, I gathered, yeah, okay. I had gotten to that. Yeah, yeah. Before Kathy and Rick left for Bermuda, somebody told Kathy, like, ah, wouldn't it be so interesting if you brought Harold the doll on your trip? No, it wouldn't. <laughs> like, wouldn't it be super funny to bring a haunted doll to the Bermuda Triangle? No, it sure wouldn't. Kathy was like, yeah, it would. Of be so funny. Yeah, of what course. What a hoot. <laughs> so, she I mean, did you're it. already testing your luck when you go there. Uh-huh. uh-huh. I'm just saying. Yeah. Don't put yourself in a position to test it even more. No, no. She was like, I'm in. So she placed the doll in the bag that she had received it in, and it was checked in with her three pieces of luggage when she boarded the cruise. Rick and Kathy went to their room after a long day of traveling, and their luggage wasn't there. Around noon, the crew found two of their bags, and it was the bags with Rick's clothes and not his shoes, and Kathy's luggage was all missing. The crew looked everywhere, but they could not locate her items. So she only had her small carry-on, and she had to miss all the formal events because she didn't have the proper clothing. Aww. So that would actually suck a lot. She spent the entire trip wearing the only two outfits that she had with her. And 10 minutes before they exited the ship, surprise, they got a call. The luggage bit has been located. I mean, truthfully, <laughs> I would be okay with wearing the same two outfits for the whole thing because I just wear the same, like, two outfits, like, my whole life anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. that's, that's valid. <laughs> But I would be like, you know what? Just another day at home because I always pack so much shit for trips. And then I literally wear like three of the outfits. Like I did. I just I go back to my comfort stuff. It wouldn't be that big of a deal. Yeah. If you only had to rotate between two of them. However, if you have to miss events because of it, that yeah. does suck because you're paying for that experience. I mean, I'm not going to go to the formal events anyway. OK. <laughs> <laughs> So a man who shared a small room with three friends said, oh, my gosh, the bag has been in the room the whole time. How did that get here? No. <laughs> the whole time? Yeah. So. <laughs> there it is. I, uh, Whoop. There it is. I mean, that's that would actually piss me off. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if he, like, knew... And just didn't do anything about it till the last second. Or if it's just like they're cleaning up their stuff and, oh, there's this bag. Either Must way. have been there the whole time. Yeah. yeah, it sucks. After they left the cruise, Kathy and Rick headed back to her aunt's house. And she was feeling so much better. And she had gone two full weeks without any back issues at this point. As soon as they got to the house, her back went out again and she ended up in the emergency room. That was the first moment that Kathy was like, uh, does this have anything to do with Harold the doll? She decided that once the post office opened the next morning, she was actually just going to ship him back because she was too scared to fly home with him. Oh, I suppose. I mean, yeah, that's, that's valid. I wouldn't even ship him back to me. I'd just be shipping him to some random ass address. Whoops. No. Uh, Whoops. You can't. What? No. <laughs> Hannah. <laughs> Hannibal. You can't do that. My bad. <laughs> she never thought that Greg's stories about the doll were actually real on eBay, but she was like, what if they were true? Rick insisted that Harold need to, needed to get out of their lives. Let somebody else deal with them. Just like Hannah said. Get him out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, not my chair, not my problem. Okay. A year later, he was put up for auction again by Kathy. The first person that won did not pay for him. So she put him up for auction again. And the title said eBay's most infamous haunted doll. Anthony Quinata knew nothing about the doll, but the title lured him in, and he found Greg's original listing. He said it was obvious when he watched Greg's videos that the parts where the doll was supposedly talking were super fake, and he could see the doll's arm moving, but he assumed that it was just fishing line. 
The videos made him laugh, so he decided to get the bidding started. He placed a bid of $300. He thought that there was a higher reserve, and so he kind of explained that he really had this thing about reserves. He always wanted to see how high someone would put their reserve. So that's why he put the $300 in there. So he's just willing to keep going to Yeah, see. to figure out where it is. Wow. It's a dangerous game. That is a slippery slope. Because you might win. <laughs> so he puts the $300 down and, oops, <laughs> he was the highest bidder. <laughs> and uh, he's like, well, hopefully somebody will just outbid me later. We'll see what happens. Almost immediately after placing the bid, he received an email from Kathy, and she was like, I need to know why you want this doll. And he's like, well, I don't really want it. I just wanted to see where the reserve was. She sent another email, and she said, I don't believe that this doll is haunted. I do believe it's cursed. What the fuck was that noise? I don't know. Did you hear it? I heard it. What I the don't know. fuck was that? I do not know. We will be saging because I'm scared. I am so scared. It came from over by me. It was over it there. Did. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. nothing moved. I but know. I specifically heard it. Yeah, I was over in your corner. Oh, no. So let's keep going. <laughs> but yeah, let's just get it over with. <laughs> so after she says, like, okay, the doll's not haunted. I think it's just cursed. Anthony changed his mind. He was like, okay, well, now I want the doll. Kathy explained what happened with the wedding and the cruise, and Anthony was hooked. Kathy also said, quote, My fiancé and I knew a couple, John and Veronica, from work. We became friends. John and Veronica liked to travel, and they were going to Amsterdam. The night before they were to leave, they came to our home for dinner. I had just gotten the doll, and since Veronica was a collector of antiques, she asked if she could see it. I showed it to her. She made a comment about the bad shape the doll was in and laughed. A few days later, John called us from Amsterdam. He told us that Veronica had died. She went out on the balcony to have a cigarette and fell down the stairs, hitting her head on the steps. She fractured her skull, had brain injuries, and died as a result. I couldn't believe it. Just three days before, John and Veronica were at our house eating dinner and laughing. After Veronica's death, John decided to move back to South Africa. They had a boarder named Stephen who was staying with them, but suddenly was without a home. We offered him the extra room we had at our house. I used to keep the doll in a shed in our backyard. The night I showed it to Veronica, I put Harold in the closet of the extra room and forgot about it. That was the same room we would later offer to Stephen. Stephen was originally from Wales, and before he came to live with us, he went back there. While he was there, he had a physical and came home with a clean bill of health. Three months after moving into that room in our home, he began to have difficulty swallowing. Then he started to lose his voice. He went back to Wales to see what was wrong. He was diagnosed with stage four cancer of the larynx and was given a short time to live. Jeez, so that happened fast. Yeah, so are you interested in buying the doll, Hannah? D are you kidding <laughs> Is me? Is this hooking you? No. <laughs> I want no part of this. Well, Anthony was like, I'm into this story. He did decide after thinking about things. He was like, okay. If he got outbid, then he was just going to be out of the game. But if he won it, you know, after placing that $300, then he'd keep the doll. See, I just love reading about the people that actually do buy stuff like this. Yes. Or like watching movies about the people that but buy I don't stuff want like it. this. But I want no part in it. My home is a safe space. I do not want to be haunted. Mm -hmm. I don't want that. No. He was not going any higher for the doll. He did get outbid by $5 by an eBay member whose handle was, it's either like Strange Magic or Strange Magic. It's M-A-J-I-K. Okay, well, it better be Magic because that sounds really cool. That's what I was thinking too. That's the one I liked. So we're going Strange Magic. 
Anthony received an email from this user, and he was told not to bother bidding because the doll was his. Anthony was like, all right, he can have the doll, but it's going to cost him. They got into a bidding war, which he thought was hilarious. Kathy sent Anthony an email, and she was like, hey, guess what? The other eBay bidder, you know, Strange Magique, he's complaining. And he had asked her to end the auction and just sell him the doll for 400 bucks. And she said no. If he, if somebody would have messaged me on eBay, like, don't even bother. Now you just made it. So I am going to get that one. I'm going like to bother. Not. Yeah. <laughs> now it is game on. Like, yeah. if you would have just left it, it would have been fine. But mm-hmm. the minute you have to send me a message and be like, don't even try because yeah. I'm getting this. Oh, it is on. <laughs> Watch me. <laughs> Anthony and Kathy continued to email each other, and she enjoyed learning that he was a paranormal investigator. Over the next few days, Strange Magic and Anthony continued their bidding war, and it was finally coming to an end. Anthony bid the doll up to $680, and Magic bid $700. There was four minutes left, and Anthony put in a bid for $720, and he was like, I cannot wait to see how far Magique is going to go. Few seconds left. The an- anticipation was killing him. And then, congratulations, you won! Went up on Anthony's screen. <laughs> and he's like, well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, at least he won! <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Kathy sent Anthony an email, and she was like, listen, it's fine. If you don't want the doll, you don't have to pay for it. I'm not going to force you to take it. And he was like, no, a deal is a deal. He agreed to send her the money, and Kathy knew that he didn't really want the doll. So she was like, all right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hold on to the doll for two weeks. I'll let you kind of think about things. You can decide, and then let me know. If he decided against it, she said she would just send his money back. But if he wanted the doll, then she was going to donate half the money to a local children's hospital and the other half would go to another charity. Okay, but super cool of her to be like, you don't have to if you don't want to because I know you didn't want to like in the first place. Yeah, I mean, obviously she wants to get rid of this thing. But yeah, it's awesome that she's not pushing a potentially haunted or cursed doll on him if he doesn't want that in his life. I'd be like, well, you won. Here you go. Yeah, for real. (laughs) It's all your problem now. (laughs) Three weeks after the auction ended, Kathy emailed Anthony and confirmed that he wanted the doll. So she boxed it up and she's like, you still have time to change your mind. (laughs) Anthony was like, no, send the doll. So she took Harold to the post office. Ten minutes later, as she is driving home, she hears on the radio that the postal workers had just gone on strike, and she was convinced this was Harold's fault. She emailed Anthony, and she said, I should have thrown the damn thing in the ocean and given your money back to you. A few weeks later, the strike was over, and she told him that he was going to receive the doll soon, but she was worried for him. Anthony Quinata had been bidding on several other things from eBay during this time frame. He was looking for haunted items, and he even bought a mirror that had a newspaper article pasted on the back that announced President Lincoln's assassination. (laughs) He was just inviting a lot into his life. Oh, God. I know. It had to be dolls and mirrors. Right. I know. I hate mirrors. I'm like, as I'm reading the book, I'm going, Anthony, why? Why? God, (laughs) I freaking hate mirrors. Yeah. Okay. He was getting packages daily, and one of them was from Dublin, Ireland. So, I mean, yeah, he's getting a lot of them. Uh, In the book, I think he just said it was like Christmas. (laughs) Yeah, of (laughs) haunted shit. Right. Absolutely not. That's not Christmas. (laughs) That is not Christmas. No. Harold had finally arrived. Before even opening the box, Anthony reread all of the emails from Kathy. 
Once he was done, he carefully opened the box and saw that the doll was inside the Dwayne Reed drugstore bag, the same one Greg had given to Kathy when she won the doll. Even though Anthony didn't believe that this doll was haunted, he was kind of hesitating. Should he take it out of the bag? No. No, he shouldn't. <laughs> he whipped out his tri-field EMF meter to see if he could detect any electromagnetic fields coming from the doll. He also checked the doll over with his natural EM meter to measure the natural direct currents. Both showed nothing. Before touching it, he still sprinkled the doll with holy water, just in case. I think it needs more than a sprinkle. <laughs> <laughs> I would not just be sprinkling. Hannah, he's not getting anything with these meters. I do not care. Okay. I would be doing a lot more than sprinkling if there was holy water. I'd be like freaking just Dunking. bathing him. Yeah. <laughs> Anthony took Harold out of the bag, placed it on the couch, and snapped a few pictures. He didn't see anything weird in the digital pictures either. Even though he wasn't able to pick anything up with his meters, he wondered if he could capture any EVPs with his electronic voice phenomena. The voices aren't heard at the time of the recording, but the device allows you to hear them when you play it back. Anthony didn't get anything with the EVP session, and this suggested Harold was not actually haunted. But just to be on the safe side, he placed a bottle of holy water and a crucifix in the bag when he put him back. Maybe Kathy had an over -ima overactive imagination, right? I don't think so. <laughs> Well, Anthony did know a psychic named April, and he wondered if she would be willing to do a reading with Harold. He called her, and he said, hey, I'd like to do a reading with some objects. Is that cool? And she's like, yeah, let's meet up at a bookstore. He did not tell her he was going to bring Harold. First, he showed her some of the other items he had been getting on eBay, and he decided that he was going to show her the doll last. When it was time, he opened the bag, and April goes, Is that Harold? She had seen him all over the internet. Anthony sprinkled the doll with holy water and placed him in April's hands. Him and his damn sprinkles. Sprinkle, sprinkle. And she giggled. She was like, Oh my God, it's so funny that you're being this cautious. She said, He's a composition doll. I think he was made sometime in the 30s. I'm getting something about the spirit in the doll being a child molester, a molested child, or both. Um, there's really big differences between those. Huge. But I guess so, it could be both was the last option. Right. But I'm just saying, like, those are some real big different I spectrums know. right yeah. there. So. Yes, yes. April began crying and shaking, and she said she could not hold on to the doll anymore. Oh, what he, happened to the giggling a minute ago? Well, let me tell you. Because, quote, he's just told me he's going to kill me. April said that she had a heart murmur. After Harold said that he was going to kill her, she felt like somebody was grabbing onto her heart. Anthony was super disappointed with how the session went. And he wasn't even sure that he believed April about what Harold supposedly said or about her even having a heart condition. He turned off the recording equipment and headed home. When he got there, he decided, eh, might as well listen to that recording, see if there's any EVPs. Uh -huh. So, oh God, is it going to be in there? Is he going to be able to hear him say it? <laughs> ah! Okay. <laughs> he could hear. April laughing, you know, when he sprinkled that holy water on Harold, then he heard it. A male voice angrily and clearly said, shut up. Then as he sprinkled the water on the doll, he heard a scream. When April mentioned that the spirit in the doll was a molested child, child molester, or both, there was an angry roar and a male voice said, I'm going to kill you, bitch. Ah! Okay. Isn't that so scary? I'm screaming internally. Uh, so I don't kill everybody's ears. Thank you. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. 
It was around this time that Anthony decided he was going to write a book about Harold. One of his friends examined the doll, and she believed that the spirit was imprisoned inside the doll by some kind of magic. He decided to take the doll on a trip to California. He what? often... <laughs> I mean, what? It, what? <laughs> Why are people just bringing him out with them? Well, he's just going on a little trip, Hannah. <sighs> he often visited Venice Beach where his siblings lived and Anthony knew of like a mother and daughter team that did palm and tarot card readings on the sidewalk. He showed the young woman the doll and asked if she could do a reading. She immediately said she would not help and asked him to go away. The ladies refused to give him any more information. All right, that clearly wasn't going to work. Anthony had another idea, though. He was like, maybe I should bring Harold to the Whaley house. N what is it <laughs> with these people? What a brilliant idea, right? What freaking <laughs> is it? Uh, and when you, oh, that's another one that you're testing your luck if you're going there. Yeah. Don't bring something with you that makes it worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god and by the way we covered the whaley house in episode 78 and like it's known ago. as one of the most haunted houses right. in america right and he's like let me bring this doll there oh god so anthony this placed feels like this feels yes. like zach baggins when he just does stupid shit like bringing a haunted fucking doll to the haunted fucking doll thing was it not Harold? Yes, it was. Yeah. Well, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I um, can't. What the fuck? <laughs> so when we covered the island of the dolls and Zach Bagans brought Harold the doll there, I was like, we should cover Harold the doll. Uh, I can't. Everybody is just bringing him all over the place to all yeah. these haunted places when you shouldn't be bringing him there. He be traveling. Holy crap. This doll goes on more vacations than oh, I do. Honest to God, though. <laughs> so he placed Harold and a recorder behind a door at the Whaley house, and he just walked around, and he was able to pick up several EVPs while he was there. He was more convinced than ever that he would need to get a reading from another psychic, but it had to be someone that didn't have prior knowledge of Harold. He took the doll to a place called Celebrations, which is a semi-annual psychic fair. He asked three different psychics to do a reading with the doll, and they all declined. He randomly received a call from a woman named Angie. She was a mutual friend of the first psychic who tried to do a reading with Harold. She asked if he wanted to meet up for lunch, and he agreed. He was not going to tell her anything about the doll. Anthony waited for her to arrive, and he suddenly felt drained. This often happened when he was around Harold. So he fell asleep and woke up to his friend Angie screaming his name. Anthony! He ran out of his room and saw her standing with her body flat against the wall. And she was just pointing towards the kitchen. She yelled, is that Harold? She said that when she got in the driveway, she was overcome with this feeling of danger, but she couldn't explain why. The feeling only got worse as she got closer to the house. She knocked and Anthony didn't answer, so she walked into the home and started calling his name. That's when she saw the doll in the kitchen just grinning at her ew yeah no i know <laughs> no and she tried to run but she felt like somebody was stopping her from doing that anthony tried again to find somebody to do a reading with harold a friend of his named diane offered help and when he pulled the doll from the bag she made a comment about a molested child when listening back to the EVPs during this part, a male voice yelled, fuck you. There were two marks on Diane's fingers that looked like she had been bitten. And suddenly her left eye was red and swollen. 
Anthony measured the indentations on her fingers against the doll's teeth. And it was an exact nope. match. Absolutely not. So the doll bit her. Nope. Nope. Uh, yeah. Okay. You're gonna love this next part. Oh, good. <laughs> when the readings were not working, Anthony got another idea. He decided, do you want to guess, Hannah? What do you think would be the dumbest thing for him to do? He's already done the, one of the dumbest <laughs> things. He freaking bought it and then brought it to the Whaley house with him. Yeah. <sighs> what do you think would be, like, really spooky? <laughs> hmm. I don't know. Oh, I actually don't know. I mean, okay. he's already kind of done about the dumbest things he could do at this point. Well. <laughs> but you're making it sound like he gets... Even worse with it. Oh, all right, just laid on me. He decided to get out the Ouija board. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> no. But he was like, you know what? I don't want to do it alone. I... Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm... No. So... Okay. He, <laughs> oh my god, Megan. Oh no. He was part of a ghost hunting group. Oh god. And he asked all of the ghost hunters and they said no. But then their newest member, Heather, oh, agreed no. to help. Poor thing. Like, this is a little bit of a hazing thing, I think. <sighs> <laughs> She's probably like, well, I gotta take one for the team. You know, show them I'm ready. Uh, this she was is not. gonna be so rough. So they did not do any protection rituals, and oh they decided my... to skip the prayers. No. Uh, okay. Which to me is a little interesting when he's so into sprinkling that holy, holy water, water, yeah, and a crucifix, and he's like, "I'm gonna skip the prayers and such." <sighs> okay. I'm freaking out. So they placed their fingers on the planchette. Oh, God. And okay. they asked. Ah! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> ah. Is there anyone here? Yes. No, you went silent too long. <laughs> there was too much time for noises to happen. I'm freaking out. Okay. Are okay. you the one trapped in the doll? Yes. Is your name Harold? No. What is your name? It spells out A H M E D, Ahmed. They listened to the recording, and when they said the name Ahmed, a voice corrected them and said, Adam. Suddenly, Heather was gripping her side, and she's like, Oh my gosh, it's burning! She lifted up her shirt, and there was a long red gash down her right side. That was the last time Anthony ever heard from her. If she was done with she the ghost hunting group. She just peaced out? Yeah, that was enough. Damn! She was not ready. A lot of people were warning Anthony that the doll was dangerous, but he was like, you guys, it's not going to hurt me. Um... <laughs> what? But... That all changed. What? What do you think? Just because he bought it? Yeah, like he is apparently the owner of it, immune? so it's going to hurt everyone else and not him. Okay. So next week, uh, we're going to hear about how Harold the doll is put away in storage for many years, and once he's let out, he went right back to his same old tricks. Anthony got a few more psychic readings with Harold, and he was being told that there may be more than one spirit attached to the doll. Well, there probably is fucking now because he went and used the Ouija board. <laughs> and he then he brought a him to the, of them in there. Yeah, and he brought him to the Whaley House, like, dude. <laughs> and he went to the freaking Bermuda Triangle. Oh god. Yeah, he probably has extra spirits in there now. <laughs> that could be. Uh, Harold begins reading Anthony's thoughts. Oh, God, that's just <laughs> awesome. 
And a child becomes a key source of learning information about Harold, and he's able to provide the name of someone locked inside. Oh, God. Okay. So that's all next week. Yay. <laughs> Uh, Also, I just want to let you know that because of the whole Twitter X situation, I just got a link tree instead. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I had been hearing other people talking about it, and I was like, what is a link tree? So uh, you can click on it, and it'll just show you all of the socials that we're on. It's true. Kablam. Easy peasy. All right. So make sure to. Follow us on any of your podcast apps. Tell us the stories you want to hear. Check out our link tree. Give us a five-star review if you love us. Tell your friends. Tell your cats. Um, Bye. Bye.